This is the first episode in a series I'll be making about upgrading my mini lathe. If you have no interest in electronics projects, 3D printing or mini lathes, then you're probably not in the right place. Alternatively, if you do like such things, but don't want to hear the background story, then go ahead and skip this episode. For those who don't know what a mini lathe is, it's a compact size luggable metal lathe with a fairly extensive feature set similar to that of a full size metal lathe. There are a number of different configurations that have been sold under various brands, but as far as I can tell, all of those are manufactured by the same company in China. Depending on where you purchase your mini lathe from, it may go through some additional QC or other reworking. This results in a wide range of experiences for the end user, even though the fundamental parts of the lathe is the same. I purchased mine about uh, 15 years ago for 1400 US dollars from a local Japanese company. Actually, the same unit still appears on their website today, but it is indicated as being discontinued. A quick search online indicates that the real base price for these mini lathes is close to around about 600 US dollars. But considering the shipping costs and QC concerns, at that time buying from the local vendor made more sense for me. It might make more sense for you too. If you do a quick search online, you'll find a number of configurations at various pricings available. If you look closely, you can quickly identify the common parts that are used across all the different versions, but also note some of the obvious differences too. The first time I used a metal lathe was back in high school. We made a center punch and some parts for a hand plane, and that was about it really. Between then and getting my own mini lathe, I never really got any further time on a metal lathe. Actually, it was fun. I made a lot of stuff for my radio control flying habits, such as this propeller spinner, helicopter tail support, propeller mount, landing gear steering system. Looking at the photos, I think you can get an idea that the mini lathe is more than capable of making well-finished practical parts. But it was not all good news. The lathe was seriously underpowered, the speed controller unpredictable, there was a weird harmonic vibration at certain speeds, and the compound is weak, causing the cutting tool to shift around even under moderate loads. I suspect the root cause of the vibration is likely that plastic gears are being used for the gear change mechanism inside the head stock and they've warped a bit, so replacing them with metal ones would likely improve that. But as it's not a showstopper, I'm just leaving those issues for now. The movement in the compound is something also which I can't easily fix, so I'm going to leave that for now. Possibly with a little bit more power and consistent speed, that might reduce the habit of the tool of sinking down under load, but I guess we'll see. So the key thing I always thought I could improve was the motor and the controller, which are horrendous. I think this old Tony had a mini lathe video just a little while back. I definitely said you should go and take a look at that because it clearly demonstrates the underpowered performance of the standard motor. For me, it was even worse. Even without the uh, load, the thing would speed up, slow down all the time, and parting cuts were just about simply impossible. Pretty much from the day I started using the mini lathe, I've been wanting to boost the power of the motor. And finally, the time has come with this project. And with the advancement of microcontroller technology, I also have an idea to computerize the controller itself. So for any project to succeed, you need to have some good motivation. Otherwise it never starts, or likely never finishes. So here's my motivation. Firstly, I want to have a useful lathe on hand so I can use it for other projects. Boosting the power of my mini lathe should do the trick. My second motivation is to get more intimately familiar with the capabilities of modern microcontrollers such as the STM32 series. My third motivation is to have a decent sized project to write C in, as this is a basis to learn a language, which if I'm honest, I've always avoided. And the final motivation is this video series, hopefully having something useful and interesting to share. When I approach a new project, I always set myself some basic concept goals and mental guidelines. And for this project, they are as follows. I want to maintain the lathe lugability and not add external things being required for the lathe to function, such as an external power supply or computer box or something like that. Everything should be internalized. I want to keep the material cost for the, for the conversion to be under around about $200 US. It really would make bugger all sense to spend a whole lot of money on what is effectively a cheap router. Finally, the finished lathe should be physically easy to maintain and have well-polished controller software. I'm going to use my typical figure it out as you go approach. I find this much more efficient compared to try to figure it all out first approach. First, I want to find a powerful brushless motor and ESC to use in my mini lathes. A little research on the topic and it seems a number of people have added off-the-shelf brushless motors and ESCs to their mini lathes, so nothing groundbreaking here. But most people seem to have one of those little servo knob controllers. For my project I want to use this blue pill to control the motor speed via PWM and I'm thinking to add this display to provide the feedback to the operator. What exactly will be displayed is not clear to me yet, but I guess as I get familiar with the capabilities of the SDM32 blue pill, I'm sure I'll be getting deep into the rabbit hole quickly and pushing the limits as hard as I can. So that's it for this episode. If you made it this far, then thanks so much for watching. And if you want to, feel free to subscribe to catch the next episode where I'll be start off by installing a brushless motor and EC that I've selected. So I hope to see you then.